So recently, Potholer54 absolutely knocked it out of the park with this video about the, the causes of uh, Australia's bushfires. And basically really taking to task all those who are uh, pimping every distraction and conspiracy theory to avoid the blindingly obvious fact that eh, Australia being hotter is a, a correlated factor to bushfires in Australia. Um, and one of the guys who crops up more than once is one Paul Joseph Watson, who uh, is either comically stupid or... Uh, I mean, the the way that he pimps out conspiracy theories, I, I he could just be a very sophisticated Stephen Colbert character or maybe he just is that dumb. Anyway, this is what he has to say about um, uh, the, the, the causes of the Australian bushfires. Which is exactly what all the other experts are saying. Droughts in the affected regions were caused by a natural weather phenomenon, the Indian Ocean Dipole, not by man-made climate change. Sorry, I... Act yeah, um, and Potholer is about to go on and say, it's called a bloody dipole! I mean, it really is like someone boldly and confidently giving you advice on how to fix your engine whilst mispronouncing the word engine as engine or something like that. It's like you you really just don't have the slightest clue. Um, and even this, it's like, yeah, okay, there are natural weather phenomena that, that cause weather patterns and when there's more energy in the system these things become more severe basically it is due to the being the, the planet being hotter See, really like good. your public statements on climate change it is nuanced see here which is exactly what all the other experts are saying droughts in the affected regions were caused by a natural weather phenomenon the indian ocean dipole Yes, the Indian Ocean, Dipole, oh, man. Uh, which, which is related to the temperature of the planet. Anyway, um, there's another point where he, he crops up, which is about the five minute mark, which is also very comical. 1901, average December mean continent, and on that mm -hmm. continent average, Temperatures haven't been significantly higher either. In fact, okay, you got that. He's going to tell you that temperatures haven't been significantly higher either. Let's see what wonderful evidence he's got for that. In fact, during the years 1899 to 1901, average December mean maximum temperatures were well above 38 degrees. But um, at, at which point is like, what? what? What did he just say? Nineteen ninety one average. He, he he's going to basically end up describing average. temperatures haven't been significantly higher either. In fact, during the years eighteen ninety nine to nineteen eighteen ninety nine, you know one average to nineteen oh one. He's talking about these data points here for one single place uh, for the average temperature um, for December. We'll get. He's not talking about the country. He's talking about one bloody weather station where the data stops 30 years before the present. I mean, this data stops in about 1990. <laughs> it's like... December mean maximum temperatures were well above... Not the... December mean maximum temperatures. Now, it turns out you can actually go to this very website and you can see what the average mean, well, the, the average temperatures for Australia have been like. And you see that it's increased by about one degree over the last hundred years or so, which is comparable to what you get for most of the rest of the planet. And, you know, it's not sort of symmetric in terms of, you know, heating and rainfall and all that sort of thing. But on average, it's heated up about a degree. Keep that number in mind, okay? And you can also um, type in the place that you want, which in this place, in this case, is a place called Walget. Never heard of it, but um, 
and you do your search and you come up with this and you get the actual weather data and indeed you will see that the weather data stops oh, well short of the year 2000 which is 20 years ago now now anyone with uh, you know I eventually just started scrolling through these and eventually came to the nearest place which had a continuous data set which was the hospital right you know just for a place in the same rough locality where they have data up to the present so it's a hundred years worth of data now i did also find a blog uh, it's just a blog but someone basically doing a data analysis on all get that's where the place is and they they looked at you know all the weather stations in the area and what do you know the temperature is heated up by about eh, a degree or so over the last hundred years. Right? <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, our, our Paul Joseph Watson is not cherry picking data at all because of of, of the, uh, a hot year back in whenever that was. Um, anyway, so if you actually pull out this data, um, you can actually take a look at that. And what you find is, let's get the data up. Uh, first thing first, I'm going to plot up the yearly December data. There we go, boom. That's your December data um, for the last 100 years. And December is almost, it's like 40 something degrees. It's a cooker. Anyway. So you tend not to see trends very easily like this, especially if you're looking for, remember what the average heating of Australia was? It was about one degree Celsius. Um, so clearly you're going to have to do some averaging on this. So the averaging I did was I just took about a seven-year rolling average or something. And you take seven-year rolling average and you get to something that looks like that. Um, so yeah, last few years there's been a, eh, quite an uptick in in temperature. Um, now it, you know, it's it, it's been hotter and cooler over the years, but of course you know if you want forest fires, you want what do you want? Uh, you don't want any rain, and you want it to be hot for a few weeks. Um, you know to dry out the land. It's not going to dry out just because you've had a few hot days or something. Um, so let's take a look at the rest of the year. Let's take a look at November. And again, lots of noise on the November, but we heat up by about one degree Celsius over a hundred years. October, eh, this is a bit all over the place. Not much of a pattern there. The September data is incredible. I mean, the Septembers for the last 20 years have been up to three degrees warmer than... Um, than they've historically been, which is yeah, three bloody degrees. And the same goes with their August and July, which is obviously where it's cold in um, Australia. A again, you know, you do get the, the one degree temperature rise, but, um, and I, I think for the first half of the year, there's nowhere near as much of a pattern that, uh, for the first half of the year, yeah, it meanders around a bit, but um, yeah, the one where there is the really dramatic change is, so that's March, is September. And September is like, bloody hell, look at this. Anyway, um, and if you plot that up for the year and the year on average, eh, you know, it, uh, if you average over the whole year, Mm, it, it, it's difficult to say, but I mean, yeah, okay, there's been a warming trend for the last, yeah, whatever, um, 30 years or something. Uh, but, you know, you don't really care about that. If you're looking for the fires, uh, you need it to be dry for a few weeks. And, yeah, that, at that point, you're into uh, what's the rainfall like? <clears throat> And you, that's the weather pattern that uh, he was talking about earlier, this this Indian Ocean Dipole. And the more energy there is in it, the more water it can potentially move around or, or suck out from one place, 
which is essentially what you're looking at. So I often thought that, um, you know, <clears throat> maybe a better analogy for um, all of this. Yeah, because these, the, these people who want to cast doubt and dispersion on, you know, the, the, the correlation between there being a hotter planet and more extreme weather events is... It, it would be like claiming that cigarettes don't cause cancer because someone smoked a cigarette and they didn't get cancer. In fact, they smoked 50 cigarettes and they didn't get cancer. You know, these things are statistical events. I mean, as you could see, I mean, from the weather, it's bloody obvious that um, you, you need to average it for, you know, years before you can even start to see the patterns in this. And even at that, you know, it's September is the one where there's the the big change. But, um, yeah, you, you look at these things over the period of 100 years and the whole continent, the pattern is clear. So, you know, claiming that this doesn't affect the weather is um, kind of some hardcore denial. But it's also kind of like claiming that cigarettes don't cause cancer or, you know, drinking doesn't actually affect your chances of dying um, in a car crash. Because, you know, you can actually drink quite a lot and not die. Therefore, you know, people who drank less than you and died in a car crash couldn't have been due to them being impaired due to alcohol. Um, so, yeah, the statistical events, um, you know, these extreme fires, you can't sort of directly correlate one to one. But, you know, you, you can certainly correlate... Um, once you get into, uh, you know, patterns that span over years to decades like this, you know, but, and they, they, they were predicting this, that, you know, there'd be more extreme weather, forest fire seasons. Um, yeah, they were predicting that, I think in the, uh, 20 years ago, you know, they were actually putting out science studies that were predicting this. Anyway, I strongly recommend you go and take a look at potholes video because it's bloody awesome and uh thanks for watching